continuing our probe of the circumstances surrounding the death of the King of Pop, who, despite whatever you've heard elsewhere, is scheduled to be buried at the end of the month in Forest Lawn Cemetery in a private ceremony attended only by family and close friends. So, so uh, forget about that whole idea about Neverland. That's not happening. Uh, our focus, though, remains on the criminal probe of uh, Michael's house doctor, Conrad Murray, shown here and others, and on the massive wrongful death action the estate may be filing against people the family feels responsible for cutting off Michael in the last weeks and months of his life. And in that regard, as millions of dollars continue to pour into the Jackson estate, I'll lose that picture. Lose that. I'm tired of looking at that guy. One character who continues to pop up in our investigation is a mystery advisor named Dr. Tume Tume. Here's Craig's report. Was it your opinion that Michael Jackson was ever physically able to conduct those concerts in London? No, we, we never felt that he would be able to make uh, more than a couple shows in London, if any of the shows in London. Uh, which is why our deal was so tailored for Michael. Patrick Alaco is a New Jersey-based concert promoter who spent the last 10 months trying to book Michael Jackson for a one-night gig. His negotiations with Jackson insiders gave him a ringside seat to the pop star's physical, mental, and financial state leading up to the ill-fated London concert series and ultimately Michael's death. Is there a villain in this real-life melodrama? Alaco thinks so. In your dealings, you were exposed to different people around Michael, including his then financial advisor, Dr. Tomei Tomei. Tell me about his relationship with Michael. Did he know that Michael was having problems getting prepared for any concert? Uh, yes, everyone, everyone around the inner circle of Michael knew that there were difficulties, there were missed rehearsals, there, were, um, there was uh, erratic behavior on the part of Michael. Uh, in terms of his, his uh, dedication to the project. Geraldo, your sources knew months before he died that Jackson's concert preparations were deeply flawed. So I watched sure. these businessmen, I watched them advance this money to Michael, uh, throwing the money into the black hole that was his, uh, his life in disarray, uh, and never believing that he would ever really make, uh, consummate yeah. the comeback, and clearly that's, uh, that's the reality. According to Alaco, as he attempted to push his own project, he became aware that Jackson's inner circle, namely Dr. Tomei Tomei, was well aware of Jackson's addiction to drugs and his deteriorating health. Dr. Tomei uh, intimated to me and told, yes, that there, were, uh, there was an understood problem with drugs. Dr. Tomei told us flat out that, there would be, that he, he didn't feel Michael would make one date in London. Tomei is the mysterious financial advisor who convinced Jackson to make Neverland the next Graceland. In a bold venture, he arranged Colony Capital, a private equity firm run by Los Angeles billionaire Tom Barak, to invest $22 million to save Neverland from foreclosure. Then people got greedy. I overheard Michael Jackson telling uh, Leonard Rowe that he only committed to 10, uh, 10 shows in London. Alaco feels Michael was pushed into the London concert series by businessmen trying to exploit Jackson's well-publicized money troubles. Dr. Tomei's was charged with one, uh, one thing, and that's to bring money into Colony Capital, to, to, to recover that debt that they had on Neverland. And Dr. Tomei used AEG as one of the tools to do that. And that was, uh, they at one point told me it was a $500 million three-year project. That's a tremendous amount of money at stake, and uh, I think money corrupts, and I think you see the, the end result of greed. You, I, I agree with that, what the guy's saying, but you cleaned up his interview. Didn't he also say that Tomei Tomei said that he was going to screw Michael Jackson in a, in a very vivid uh, description? And the entire Jackson clan. Just about a month before Michael died, uh, Tomei was let go by, by Jackson and was very bitter about that. And, and uh, you know, Laka was uh, at a meeting when Tomei completely lost it and said he was going to bring death and destruction, I don't know if it was literally, on to the Jackson family. I want to ask Michael's best buyer for J. Randy Tarabarelli uh, what he knows about Tomei. Tomei, is he a bad guy? Uh, what do you know, Randy? You know, uh, over the 30-some years, Geraldo, I've been writing about Michael Jackson. I've had a lot of characters like uh, Dr. Tomei come into the picture. I'm not even convinced he's a doctor, to be honest with you. 
Um, you know, the, a lot of people have tried to help Michael Jackson, and in the course of it, they kind of get caught up in the millions of dollars that can be made. And the next thing you know, you, you, you have to question their agenda. You don't know if they're really working for Michael Jackson or for themselves. This has been a problem in Michael's life for many years. It's one of the reasons why John Branca, his, his main attorney uh, who signed with Michael in 1980 and who really built Michael's estate, it's one of the reasons why John Branca left in the 1990s was because Michael was constantly attracting this element of people into his circle. Some shady characters indeed. Uh, joining me now uh, is uh, Randy and me, uh, is one of the people who are uh, really above reproach, in my opinion, in Michael's life, Ramon Bain, his longtime publicist. Uh, you know, b before I, uh, I, I get on to our other guests, Ramon, you told me in very explicit terms how you felt that Michael was isolated and insulated from family and friends. Uh, whether that was Michael's choice or the people manipulating Michael, one thing that's at odds right now is whether or not Michael Jackson's will, in which he gave the trustees control of the estate rather than his mother Catherine, was signed when he really understood what was going on. And he, did he really want that will, which he signed in 2002, to be his last will and testament? Well, I know this, and uh, truthfully speaking, um, after the second settlement agreement with Debbie Rowe in early 2007, I asked Mr. Jackson if he had a will. And I would not have been responsible as general manager had I not, because this was a major legal um, effort, having um, taken several months. He told me there was a will in place. That's in 2007. This is early 2007, I asked him. Later in 2007, as we were finalizing the Sony ATV loan agreement, I asked How him. How much was that? I'm sorry. Uh, $360 million. Yikes. Uh huh. I asked him, was there a will in place? Well, he was a little bit more disturbed with me for asking the question a second time. He was so adamant on the fact that there was a will that I realized that not only was he aware of a will, but he was very comfortable with the decisions he had made regarding it. And um, that's all I can say. So I mean, Catherine's he, challenging the will you believe is challenging Michael's intent? Well, I do know, based on my conversations with Michael Jackson, twice in 2007, he indicated that he had a will, and obviously he was comfortable because I asked him, did he have one, and did he need his attorneys to draft one? And he made it clear to me there was a will in place. Also joining us, former Jackson attorney Mark Garagos, who was reportedly contacted to represent Dr. Conrad Murray in his upcoming criminal defense. Is that true, Mark? Welcome. You know, I don't know the, the stories that get out there. I said, I think what I originally said was that I've been contacted by doctors who've had search warrants indicated, and I would not reveal who or what. So I think I'll leave it at that, uh, Geraldo. So you're not going to say whether or not Conrad Murray reached out to you? Would it be been, a conflict to I, represent him because you did represent Michael Jackson? Clearly, clearly, I don't think that anybody who's represented Michael at least in the last five or six years could possibly defend uh, any of the doctors. You know, there's besides Dr. Murray, there's been search warrants and other subpoenas issued, coroner subpoenas issued for a number of other doctors as well in L.A. Do you expect indictments anytime soon? I um, actually am hearing that the DA's office is um, still discussing hot and heavy right now um, whether they are going to proceed, and um, I'm, I'm hearing that it's going to be sooner rather than later. And Kimberly, uh, it from would... that office, yeah, yes. LADA's office there in the trial division, and my sources at the LADA's office said that this is going to be big, it's going to be powerful, it's coming soon, and do expect indictments, and they are going after anybody that had any culpability with respect to his death. Do your sources, sources indicate that anyone other than Conrad Murray will be indicted? The scope is not limited to Dr. Murray, so expect that other people are going to go down with this, and very soon, and they should. They should.